Hi there, this is Grant Loves Books. Hello. I want to do a monthly roundup of the books I read in September because I read a lot. I really read a lot in September. The first book is this collection of short stories by Grace Haley, The Little Disturbances of Man. When I bought this book, I got it home and I thought, where did that book come from? And I realized it is on the Harold Bloom list of the Western canon. I have to make an admission that I realize that I approach short stories quite lightly. I don't give a collection of short stories the same amount of respect that I give a novel, which is a big mistake on my part, really. It is... Um, an embarrassing mistake because this might be the best book of September. I'm not entirely sure because I feel that I read it too quickly or I didn't read it with enough reflection. I read the stories, they were quite good. There seemed to be a fair bit which was hidden below the surface but I didn't take the time to really give it the consideration it needs. and. I'm going to read this book again next year because I think this might be something really substantial and I just missed it the first time. Praxis by Faye Weldon. Oh, you see the big smile? Because I did a review on this one and it made me remember why I wanted to make a YouTube channel talking about obscure literature. I got a comment from someone that said Faye Weldon was never appreciated as much as she should have been, even at the height of her success. Here we are so many years later, like, this is a wonderful book. You know, just sometimes when I, I see what people are reading, popular novels, this really deserves to be a very, very popular novel. And as far as I'm aware, it's out of print. So, like, run down to wherever you can find something like this and, and get it, because it, it deserves a new audience, please. Saturday night and Sunday morning. I'm so angry I spent $9 on this. I, I could have got this from the library. Sometimes I think a novel is, um, gets quite a lot of its success because of the catchy title. Naked Lunch, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Saturday night and Sunday morning. The, these titles are alluring. For me, it's, it's quite on the border of literature. I think you can get everything out of this book on one single reading. It's not, it's not like The Little Disturbances of Man. It's really all there. Some guy, he works in a factory on a lathe, Monday to Friday, and he lives for the weekend. What happens? Something happens and it's not particularly extraordinary. I, I just didn't feel that, that, that there was enough substance in this book to really say that this is one of the great ones. It's okay. It's fine, but not nine dollars fine. Not nine. I had this book on my shelf for a long time. Every time I picked it up, the amount of advertising on it really annoyed me. And especially this like novelty cover. Like, is this literature? I mean, when you buy this book, it looks like it comes with a free car wash. Look at all of that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of reviews. Once I got beyond my annoyance, it is very funny. And there is a lot of darkness among the humorous parts. It's very dark. As you can see by the advertisement on the cover, this is the winner of the Man Booker Prize 2008. This is, even though it's 13 years old, for me, this is an exceptionally modern novel. Like, I, I rarely read anything beyond the 2,000 years. It is wonderful. It's the Graduate by Charles Webb. This was the most fun book that I read in September. This book may be the easiest book that I have ever read. It is somewhere between 80 and 90% dialogue. It just, it makes it, like on the first day I read 200 pages and I only stopped because my eyes were burning. And on the next day I read the remaining 60 pages and it's, fun and it's very easy to read but there are problems with this book there are flaws some of the characters begin to behave i i hate to give any of the secrets away and the, the main character uh benjamin braddock he he comes home from college and he's 
confused about his life. And the, in the first chapter, his father has arranged a welcome home party, but not with his friends, with his father's neighbors and associates. And Benjamin is telling his father, look, I don't want to go to this party. I don't feel well. And his father keeps saying, oh, come on. I've invited everyone down. You've, you've, you've got to make an appearance. You know, everybody wants to shake your hand and wish you well. So in chapter one, we have this confused young man and this sort of an overbearing father. And then we have, fame. this is only chapter one, so I'm not giving away too much of the story. And I think most people are familiar with the film, that there is this, one of the neighbors, one of the women, one of the wives in the neighborhood, Mrs. Robinson, she systematically tries to get young Benjamin into bed with her, and he resists her. And then in chapter two, he goes on a road trip, and he comes back quite altered by his experience on the road. Things beget, begin to get quite strange in the book. I'm just not sure how believable it is. Like there's there's one character who Benjamin goes on a date with and he treats her terribly. Like he, he treats her so bad. Like it's painful reading because he's so miserable with this woman. But then he decides that he wants to see her again the next day, that he wants to apologize and he wants to make up for his behavior. And she agrees to see him again. And at that point I was like, there's no way any modern woman would ever agree to meet this person again. Like she would happily spend the rest of her life never meeting this idiot ever again, the way he treated her. And when a book veers away so sharply from reality, like we, we you know, the suspension of disbelief is gone. Now I'm reading the book saying, no, no, I can't believe anyone would ever do that. But it's really fun to read. If you would like to get into reading literature, and you don't know where to start, and you want to start with something easy and light, here is a place to start, because this is the easiest book I think I have ever read. So that's a fun book, although the believability towards the end, I, I just couldn't buy it, but I enjoyed reading it. Ian McEwan, Black Dogs. Ian McEwan and Margaret Atwood, any time they write anything, it goes onto the Booker shortlist. I don't enjoy reading quite a lot of those books. I've read, I've read several books from Ian McEwan, and, and it's just, it, I feel that it's been a steady downhill progression. The Cement Garden, I loved it. The Collection of Short Stories, very weird, very deviant, but I really like those too. Amsterdam, which I think won the Booker Award. After Amsterdam seemed like it was a bit underdone, like it was too short, and it could have been developed more. Okay, so after Amsterdam, I read Atonement, which is really half-baked. And then I read On Chesil Beach, which is... If you've ever read On Chesil Beach, it is infuriating that trees were cut down to publish a novel that short. It's not a novel, it's a novella. And it's simple. Man, On Chesil Beach is so simple. Like, I'm tempted to ruin it for you because it's infuriating. Like. I don't want people to buy that book because it is so, like the premise, the premise is simple. On Chesil Beach, I mean, it's, it's just, it's just nothing. The writer got lazy. This starts off good. It starts off really good. The preface, the preface where he is explaining about the circumstance, about how the main character grew up was really good. Like I was like, I was excited. I thought, wow, this is an Ian McEwan, like from the early times. And then the second chapter, gets a bit dull and then the third chapter for some reason we are taken to the fall of the Berlin Wall and it seems very irrelevant for this action to be taking place between these characters see why it was necessary to include that I checked the publication date 1992 that was three years after the fall of the Berlin Wall so Maybe while he was writing this, it was quite a poignant thing, and he was writing about the time of his life. Okay, but now, reading it almost 30 years later, what's the point of, of this chapter? I mean, there's no reason to have these two characters having this conversation in this location. And then in the third or the fourth chapter, some 
Nazi stuff is thrown in. This is like, well, uh, some hodgepodge mixture of Berlin Wall, Nazis, some maybe mystical stuff, and there you go. So I didn't enjoy this. So that's what I read in September. But most of these books are quite easy and modern. Like, it's all modern. I, I think I need to read something old, you know, some, you know, some weighty matter. I am thinking about doing a, like a longer full review of these books. And if you want to leave a comment below to let me know which one you would like to see between these two, I would appreciate it. Love this one. I guess I, I have to say that this is my favorite of September. Shame about the cover, but that's the edition I bought. How much was it? Oh, that was only $6. And this one, I, I just have to admit that I, I didn't do it justice. I just I just took it very lightly and I didn't get what this book has to offer. Grace Perry, The Little Disturbance of Man. Have you ever heard of this? I have never heard of it. Oh, thank God for Harold Bloom to compile the Western canon. What a what a beautiful mission. Thank you very much for watching, listening, clicking, whatever you did. I hope this was fun. I'll do another roundup in October. Okay, take care. some suburban hello once again I started today's video by forgetting to turn on the ring light so I got about five minutes in and realized uh, which is something I do almost every video and I'm waiting for Hello, so this is Grant Loves Books. You may wonder why I'm smiling. I'm smiling because first I did about five minutes and realized that I had forgotten to turn on the ring light. And then I did a little bit more and realized that the window was open and plenty of noise was coming in. And then the refrigerator switched on and my refrigerator is infested by some sort of bad tempered poltergeist. So I've started this video several times and this is as far as I've gotten. All right, how many times did I say that? Seven times for Christ's sake.